everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on foodborne pathogens. We're excited to have you here with us. My name is Jessica, and I'm the Director of Marketing here at AmTech. I'll be moderating today's webinar. First off, we encourage everyone to participate by asking questions throughout today's presentation. You can submit questions by clicking on Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and we'll stay on after the presentation to go over the questions that came through. To start off, for those of you who don't know, AmTech is an accredited laboratory in the San Francisco Bay Area, specializing in food safety testing and special research projects such as shelf life, challenge, validation, and spoilage investigation studies. AmTech also just opened a laboratory in Modesto, California to better serve the Central Valley. So if you know anyone who's looking for superior service in the Central Valley, please don't hesitate to reach out. Today's webinar will be led by Dr. Suki Lee, Assistant Laboratory Director of AmTech. She has over seven years of experience in food safety and microbiology, including developing antimicrobial strategies against foodborne pathogens and analyzing sanitary conditions of food processing environments. So with that, let's get started. Suki? Hi, good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about an important topic uh, which affects us all, foodborne pathogens. Before we get started, let's define what we mean by foodborne pathogens. Foodborne pathogens are microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites that can cause illness or disease in humans when it is ingested through food or water. Today's webinar will cover type of biological hazards, major foodborne outbreaks and recalls caused by pathogens, common infectious and intoxicating foodborne pathogens, intrinsic and extrinsic factors that influence the growth of foodborne pathogens, and monitor microbiological risks through microbial testing. Food safety is a crucial concern for everyone involved in the food industry, as consumers expect their food to be safe to eat. There are three main types of food hazards that can compromise food safety, biological, chemical, and physical. Um, chemical hazards can come from pesticides, cleaning agents, and other chemicals that can contaminate food. Physical hazards include foreign objects, such as glass, metal, or plastic that can accidentally get into food. Biological hazards are microorganisms, such as bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi that can cause illness in humans when consumed. Among them, bacteria and viruses are responsible for most of foodborne illnesses. So where do they exist? Soil and water, food facility plants, natural microflora in gastrointestinal tract, animal feeds, animal hides, air and dust, insect. Okay, it is just saying everything. To understand how food can become contaminated by pathogens, we need to look at the food production chain. The food production chain includes all the stages that food goes through from production to processing, distribution, um, and handling. Food can become contaminated by pathogens at various stages of food production chain. Um, let's start with um, production. Um, Pathogens can enter the food supply chain at this stage through contaminated soil, water, or animal feces that contacts with foods. For example, if the fields are sprayed with contaminated water for irrigation, fruits and vegetables can become contaminated before harvest. Um, during the processing equipment, uh, during the processing, equipment, surfaces, and um, utensils can become contaminated with pathogens. If these are not properly cleaned and sanitized, they can contaminate the food being processed. During distribution, food can be exposed to conditions that allow pathogens to grow or exposed to cross-contamination between animal products and fresh produce. During preparation, improper handling of food by workers can also contribute to contamination if food is not handled with clean hands or if workers use contaminated utensils, it can lead to the spread of pathogens. So for example, if a cook uses a cutting board or knife to cut raw chicken, 
and then uses the same knife or cutting board without washing it to slice tomatoes for a salad. We are now looking at the annual estimates of foodborne illnesses in the US and globally. According to the CDC, um, there are an estimated 48 million cases of foodborne illnesses in the US each year. This means that one in six uh, people get sick each year in the United States. Um, globally, the World Health Organization, WHO, estimated that there are 600 million cases um, of foodborne illness each year, meaning that foodborne illnesses are a major public health concern both in the United States and globally. There were two major football outbreaks and recalls that affected thousands of people in the United States. The Peanut Corporation of America, PCA, and Chipotle outbreaks. In 2009, the Peanut Corporation of America was linked to salmonella outbreak that sickened more than 700 people and caused nine deaths in 46 states. The outbreak was traced back to peanut butter and other peanut products produced by PCA. In response to the outbreak, PCA issued a recall of all products produced in Georgia facilities since January 2007. The recall affected more than like 4,000 products and was one of the largest food recalls in the United States. This outbreak um, and recall has serious consequences for the company. The executive gets 28 years in prison um, and company filed for bankruptcy. Between 2015 and 2018, Chipotle was linked to several outbreaks um, of norovirus, clostridium perfringens, and E. coli. The outbreaks were traced back to contaminated produce and other ingredients used in the restaurants. The PCA and Chipotle outbreaks serve as important lessons for the food industry. They highlight the importance of um, proper food safety practices, including regular testing, monitoring of food products, as well as prompt and transparent communication with the public in the event of outbreak. Here are some of the major recalls in the last 13 years. Uh, Wright County Hillandale Farm Eggs was one of the top egg producers back in 2010. How billions of fresh eggs were recalled due to salmonella contamination in 2011. Um, uh, in 2011, um, 35 million pounds uh, of ground turkey was recalled due to salmonella contamination. Um, and again, another um, recall was occurred with the fresh produce containing salad um, due to E. coli contamination. And most recent one is possible contamination of Chronobacter, uh, Chronobacter sakazaki and other pathogens in powder infant formula that cause nationwide formula shortage. The lesson here is that recalls impact in a variety of ways on consumer and company. A main reason of food product recall is pathogen contamination. From 2004 to 2013, there were uh, 4,900 food recalls event in the United States involving a wide variety of foods. Most of these recalls were initiated because of possible pathogen contamination. In 2011, um, the Grocery Manufacturer uh, Association surveyed three dozen companies to learn about the impact of recalls. For companies that have faced a recall in the past five years, 77% of respondents estimate the financial impact to be up to $30 million. 23% reported even higher costs. And then 81% of the respondents deemed financial risk from recalls as significant to catastrophic. More than half of respondents have been affected by a product recall event in the last five years.
there are two types of uh, factors that affect growth of microorganisms, intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Intrinsic and extrinsic factors play very important roles to maintain a microbiologically safe food system. Extrinsic factors are um, imposed from the environment in which the food product is present, such as temperature, relative humidity, presence, concentration of gases, and presence of other microorganisms. Intrinsic factor is a property of the environment as part of the food product itself, such as pH, mo moisture content, oxidation reduction potential, nutrient content, antimicrobial constituents, and biological structures. Foodborne pathogens may cause illness in humans by either infection or intoxication after the food is eaten. Foodborne infections are caused by consuming live pathogens that grow in the body, usually in the intestinal tract, and cause illnesses. Example of microorganisms causing infection are pathogen E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria monocytogenes, and all viruses and parasite. Foodborne intoxication is caused by consuming toxin produced by high number of certain bacteria, such as Staphylococcus aureus, Clostridium botulinum, and Bacillus cereus. Some toxins are not destroyed by heat, so reheating food that was temperature abused does not necessarily make it safe. Now we see common pathogens' key characteristics in more details. Salmonella is one of the most common foodborne pathogens. Salmonella is gram-negative, motile rod, facultative anaerobes, meaning they can grow with or without oxygen. They are not fermenting lactose nor forming spore. The primary source of salmonella is intestinal tract of people and animals. Thus, raw animal product meat, uh, poultry, eggs are frequently associated with outbreaks. Pathogenic E. coli is gram-negative, uh, bacteria under Enterobacteria family. The primary source of pathogenic E. coli is fecal contamination from ruminants, including sheep and deer. Consumption of undercooked hamburger, contaminated produce, sprouts, and unpasteurized milk and juice have been linked to illness. Listeria monocytogenes is gram-positive facultative anaerobic, roll-shaped bacteria. This organism is ubiquitous in nature and have tolerance against harsh conditions. Listeria is psychotropic bacterium, which means it can grow under refrigerated temperature. Um, tolerant to low pH and high sodium concentration, and so refrigerated ready-to-eat food, such as sandwich in the fridge, have been linked to listeria outbreak. Listeria shows high fat, uh, fatality rate, about 30% in susceptible individuals, including pregnant women. Clostridium botulinum doesn't like oxygen. Clostridium botulinum produces neurotoxins that can cause paralysis of um, respiratory muscles, difficulty swallowing. These spores are heat resistant and under the right condition in the absence of oxygen can come out of dormancy and produce toxin. Um, Clostridium cannot grow below a pH 4.6. The spore can be found in soil and sediments. Um, so um, Clostridium botulinum outbreak has been associated with various foods, including low acid preserved vegetables, such as green beans and spinach and canned tuna. Um, these products provide non-oxygen condition where sea bot spore can germinate and produce toxin. Campylobacter is the most common bacterial cause of foodborne disease in the United States. Campylobacter is gram-negative, microaerophilic, curve-shaped bacterium. 
the major reservoir is intestine and also other organs. And thus Campylobacter infections are associated with poultry and or raw dairy products. Coronobacter Sekazaki infection um, rarely happens, but infections in infants can be really deadly. Coronobacter can survive in a dry condition for a long period of time. Thus, infection have been associated with dry food, like powdered infant formula or powdered milk. To prevent and monitor contamination from pathogens, good monitoring system and food safety plan should be implemented. What is microbial testing? Before I jump through specific details on microbial testing, I couldn't resist, I don't know if you've heard, um, I couldn't resist to use the latest AI technology, uh, ChatGPT, to see what microbiological testing for food safety is. I slightly fell off my chair. This is what it literally gave me. It said food microbial testing can be performed at various stages of food production and distribution, including testing of raw materials, testing of finished products, and testing of equipment and facilities. Regular testing can help identify potential sources of contamination and prevent foodborne illnesses. To be honest, I can stop my presentation here. A lot of key elements are there, which is great, but as I got a few minutes, I will give you a more specific explanation on where to test and what to test. And please keep in mind that microbiological testing does not guarantee the safety of a batch of food. When a pathogen is not detected, it does not mean that the batch of food is safe. First question we would have is where to test. In food production facility, joining concept is widely accepted as part of risk assessment for environmental monitoring. You can establish your sampling plan where to test based on the risk level of contamination through joining concept. Here is a diagram of classification of zones that serve as an example. Zone one is product contact surfaces that can include slicers, conveyors, and pillars. Zone two is non-product contact surfaces in close proximity to the product. They can include exterior of equipment and chill units. Zone three is other areas within the finished product room, including phones, hand trucks, forklifts, walls, and floors. Zone four is area outside a facility, including locker rooms, cafeteria, halls, warehouse, and loading dock. In general, we should sample more frequently, take more samples, and test, uh, test more frequently for zone one and zone two than zone three and four. Next question is, what are the target microorganism? We can test either indicator organisms or pathogens in the food and environmental samples. The reason why indicator organisms should be tested is when food safety systems are under control, the presence of pathogens of concern is not likely and maybe at really low level that is difficult to detect. Indicator organisms Organisms are a group of organisms that reflect the general condition of a food or environment where food is processed. Here are some of the indicators that can be used. Starting with aerobic plate count. Aerobic plate count is an indicator of general bacterial population in a sample. So APC is bacteria that are mesophilic aerobic microorganisms that can grow on a standard agar. Enterobacteriaceae is a family of bacteria that are gram-negative, facultative anaerobes, originating from the intestinal tract of animal and humans, as well as environment. This family includes notable pathogens such as pathogenic E. coli, Salmonella, and Shigella. Next on, fecal coliforms and E. coli can be used as an indicator of fecal contamination. Now, Listeria species can provide good indication of the likelihood of contamination with Listeria mono. 
to check what pathogens you may want to test. Um, please check pathogens, whether it has been associated with the food or it, its ingredients, and if the food has been associated with foodborne illness previously. Chicken, beef, pork, and turkey were associated with outbreaks of Campylobacter, Salmonella, Clostridium perfringens, E. coli, and Arsenia. For fruits and vegetables, including sprouts, we do not usually cook, and these are consumed as raw and keep in refrigerated if necessary. Salmonella, E. coli, and Listeria has been associated with this food. Raw milk soft cheese has been linked to Campylobacter, E. coli, and Listeria contamination. Seafood and raw shellfish has been linked to Vibrio and norovirus. Um, this is additional information that you can find um, at FDA. FDA published hazard analysis and risk-based preventive control for human food includes potential hazard for food and processes. This article includes other uh, food commodities such as bakery, beverages, chocolate, and candy, and their potential biological hazard. In conclusion, today we learned foodborne illness is a big concern threatening public health in the United States and globally, and also outbreak and recalls may affect company financial situation significantly or catastrophically. We also learned the microbiological testing to monitor food safety to pre prevent outbreak and recalls. Joining concept can be used to identify microbiological testing site, and we learned what to test either indicator or pathogens. This was all my presentation today, and thank you for attending this webinar.